Thanks, Warren. Some of the country's top corporations and organizations take on the highest honors as the country's most prestigious award-giving body, the International Association of Business Communicators Philippines, recognizes excellence in business communication for 2013. Today, we're joined by Ms. Ritzy Villarigo Ronquillo, the president and IABC International Executive Board Director. Also with us are two awardees of the 2013 Philippine Quill Awards, Ms. Angel Guerrero, the editor-in-chief of Adobo Magazine, top awardee in communication skills for the entry Project Reinvention, and Ms. Jerry Martinez, she's a manager for Brand Equity Management of Smart Communications Incorporated, the top awardee in communication management for the Jump In campaign. We'll ask more about their campaigns later. Good morning, ladies. Thank you very much for joining us here in Mornings at ANC. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Ritchie, let's uh, go with you first. What were the highlights of uh, the uh, awards last year? That was held November 2013. November. Yes. It was in November. I think the most significant part was that it was our 30th year. Yes, it was uh, right. the 30th year of IABC Philippines, and IABC Philippines is the first chapter that was organized outside of the United States. Because mm -hmm. IABC is a San Francisco-based uh, organization of professional communicators. Another was that because of the occasion, we were able to have our International Executive Board Chair Robin McCasland fly in from Texas. That's right. And yeah. then we were also able to have the um, Fast Board Chair of IABC fly in from Australia, Adrian Cropley, mm -hmm. and the President of IABC Japan, Kas Amemiya. So and a sort of reunion guests. for uh, all of the members of IABC. Philippines. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's always great to be in the company of winning companies, companies that make a mark, not only in their respective industries, but I think collectively, they always help make our country move forward. That's right, and it's not just uh, corporations now. It started uh, 2012 you, when you also recognized students for their uh, creativity. Yes, we believe in uh, making sure the next generation is ready to join the workforce, mm -hmm. and not just join, but be very excellent in what they do. So we, this is the second year that we have students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's very good because then we're able to see uh, both the new generation the up-and-coming generation with those who are so experienced and leaders of the pack. And I'm guessing it's, it would be such an experience being with top corporations uh, for, uh, for, for the award. For 2013, it was UST. For 2012, I think it was uh, De La Salle uh, yes. for a uh, Facebook page. As a school of the year. As school, so of, school of the year. School of the year, the first year was De La Salle University. Yeah, that's right. And last year, it was UST. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk to the corporations. Let's start with Ms. Uh, Angel Guerrero, the editor-in-chief of Adobo Magazine. A record of sorts for 2013. This is the third time you've won the uh, category Top Award in Communication Skills. That's right. That's right. Um, it's the third year for Adobe Magazine mm -hmm. to win the top award mm -hmm. at the IABC. Um, and I'm always surprised each time we win. <laughs> Still? I guess, yes, because <laughs> I guess you know, the magazine benchmarks itself against the rest of the world. And, um, you know, since we cover the industry of advertising, marketing, and media, we have no choice but to keep reinventing ourselves because as a brand, you know, our audience is also looking for uh, to, to be inspired and to get some training from the content that we have. So every time I chronicle the industry, it's constantly evolving with digital, social media, marketing. So with that, I guess as the magazine evolves and we uh, consider the output to be something that should inspire our readers, we keep upping the game. We right. keep um, improving on our product. For, for this year, it was uh, you won because of project reinvention, and you mentioned the key word there, evolves. Yes. Evolution. That's right. Uh, talking about evolution, how, does, how do you know when a company, when it's time for a company to evolve? Is it pushed? Is, does it come naturally when, when so all of you talk about it? We have to evolve. We have to come out from something that uh, we've been doing from the, the past. Sometimes it's the customer or the consumer that moves the product or the demands in society or the demands in the economy. And um, you know, also in terms of technology, uh, the way people communicate now, there's so many platforms and it's all in front of them. So you have to see how you can remain relevant. So we keep reinventing ourselves. Like for the magazine, when we launched um, our seventh anniversary issue, we applied augmented reality, knowing that our readers also have their mobile phone on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on our cover, like here, if you, if you scan your phone, you'll get into a video 
uh, using augmented Ooh, reality cool. that shows the seventh anniversary of Adobe Magazine. Mm -hmm. And also because we feature commercials and campaigns and case studies of these campaigns. This is a print medium. What we do is we use QR codes now right. beside each campaign so they can actually see the video live. So we consider that when we invented ourselves mm -hmm. to make sure that it's people continue to read us, whether it's on their mobile phone or through the magazine. And it makes it more interactive. It's not just you reading, but you using your phone and seeing more content That's right. uh, being offered by Adobe Magazine. And we also um, looked into the photography that we use, the infographics oh, yeah. that we use. Um, so we really took time to do a lot of illustrations now, infographics, um, when we profile our, our uh, our celebrities, ad celebrities, or marketing celebrities in the magazine, we make an effort not to just have a stoic photograph of that person, mm -hmm. but really do something different, you know. And um, I think with that, uh, you know, we continue to be relevant to our readers. Okay, let's talk about another award for top award in communication management. Ms. Jerry, of course, from, from Smart. How do you manage a successful campaign? How do you start, how do you make sure that everything falls into place for it to be successful. You have to know that it's going to be successful, right? It's not just you do this and let's, let's just pray it's going, <laughs> it's going to, people are going to be biting and uh, be interested in this campaign, but how, how do you do that? Well, actually, um, it started with a germ of an idea because uh, SMART really had to be more relevant to the youth. Mm -hmm. So that was really the start of Jump In. And I guess what made it successful is a very strong insight. Because what we do in our team is really go deep diving into what the consumers think. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know the pulse of the consumer, if you don't know what is in their heart, if you don't know what makes them tick, it's really not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that insight, it's really about how you make that insight become uh, executed into a reality that will be relevant to the target market. Mm -hmm. and when you have all of the things in place already, because Jump In was actually such a big campaign. Jump In was composed of a, a music video with Jessica Sanchez and Apple the app. Yeah. We had a TV commercial with our young endorsers, with our youthful endorsers. We also had even a Jump In dance off. We had school tours. We had all of these things going on to make sure that we really reached the target audience from internet to above the line to on ground, we were all there. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had to have a very strong team behind us also. Right, of course. We had our agency helping us out. We had uh, teams internally in SMART, our sales teams, uh, trade marketing, brand equity, our brand partners, product people, everybody was into this campaign to make jump sure in campaign. it was uh, a success. Jumping campaign, of course, was uh, targeted <laughs> towards the youth. You have to share to us sometime, maybe not today, how you were <laughs> able to tap into the minds of the youth and maybe most of us parents will be needing that as we take care of them. Of course, uh, uh, when talking about successful campaigns, it will be based on the results. For your campaign, what was the result of the Jump In campaign? Well, actually the target was just 40,000 activations. Mm -hmm. We hit 244% above the target, wow. hitting about 97 activations over four months. Mm -hmm. So we really could say that it wasn't just appealing to the people who heard the song, who were singing the song, everybody was playing the song everywhere. Mm. I was so surprised because um, even when I go to the mall and they play the song on the radio, people would be singing to it and <laughs> dancing to it even. So that in itself was already you know, quite successful for us, but seeing the numbers go up for that particular offer, mm -hmm. I think was really, you know, it really ties it together. Right. And the result for the uh, for Project Reinvention for Double Magazine? Well, um, the good thing is uh, with Project Reinvention, when we launched the new look in the magazine and, and included digital um, um, interactivity in the magazine, um, when we launched it, we had verbatims from, from uh, um, our readers saying that it's now, uh, it's the wired of advertising. And, um, uh, you know, we changed our slogan from the word of, uh, word of advertising to the word of, uh, on creativity. Creativity. Yeah. So, um, with that in mind, you know, when the magazine went out to all the international festivals, because the magazine is distributed in Cannes in France, at Spikes in Singapore, the Asian Advertising Festival, I get direct feedback from the people <laughs> who read it. So, for me, that's really fantastic. And um, another thing is, with the repatching, interestingly, our ad sales went up by 20%. Wow. So I think that's good for a publication. Yeah. Um, you know, how, <laughs> how uh, you know, our industry may be struggling a bit, but uh, mm -hmm. I think this is a good sign. And it, it proves that, you know, the magazine continues to be exciting and relevant for my 
creative uh, readers. Okay. For IABC Philippines, what's next for the award season this year? Is it uh, open for uh, taking in nominations uh, this year? We will be launching it soon. And um, once again, we will be implementing the international standard of judging. I was just telling our winners here that if you win in the Philippine Quill, you must be really good. <laughs> <laughs> because and, and, the, and I saw the competition, the, the other right. companies who uh, uh, brought in their campaigns and showcased right. their campaigns. One thing uh, we really like about it is that it, it's an apples to apples thing, or if you want, Philippine it. Make it Philippine, so mangoes to mangoes. <laughs> 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 Make it mangoes to mangoes. Uh, regardless of whether you're a huge company, or you're a boutique agency, or you're a small organization, you're all pitted against the standard. And this standard is the same standard, and it's the f same four-page um, detailed judging sheet that is applied to all entries in all the countries everywhere in the world. So when you win here, it means you can compete also internationally because we're using the same metrics, mm -hmm. the same metrics, the same rubric. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we like it because it encourages everybody to come on board and to try to be excellent. And in fact, we tell all our, all our um, entries and all our entrants and those who would like to join, when you plan your campaigns and your tools, why don't you use the Philippine Quill Award outline already? Mm -hmm. Because then it gives you a really, a really a roadmap as to how to plan it in terms of creatives, as well as return on investment for your company. It's got to mean something. And it should also be sustainable. It should be ethical. And most importantly, we'd like really, and I keep saying this collectively, all winners, when you bring together all the outputs that they have, should move our country forward should right. fly right. our banner high right. and stand tall in the world stage. So mm -hmm. that's exactly why we, we encourage everyone to try out. We've had winners who have won here and abroad. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. also had winners who were not big corporations. Mm -hmm. They were boutique agencies. That's right. And it's very encouraging. Okay, and for those people who may want to watch, uh, uh, who may want to know more about who won in the Philippine Cool Awards in 2013, we will be airing that here on ANC. That would be on Feb 12 and Feb 16 with those times. Ms. Fritzi, Ms. Angel, Ms. Jerry, thank you very much and congratulations thank to you. you. Thank you. you. ABS-CBN's Matanglawin receives honors for its Earth Day special episode. And the Philippines is looking forward to the next round of the Davis Cup Sports and Entertainment on mornings at ANC Returns. Historic